Uh, again, uh, to address a couple of points, we will not be doing a city forum. I know a lot of people want us to, and we tried. But to do that, you have to have the cooperation of the candidates. Uh, and it appears the mood for most of them, not all, but for most of them is that uh, at least not on this station, they don't uh, have interest in doing a forum. Uh, individually, all the candidates have been asked to uh, appear, uh, and uh, some will accept and some won't, and that's just the way life works. Have you heard back from most of them? Um, I've heard back from probably more than half. The ones who are, are don't want to come on, I mean, have you, I mean, have you heard back from them, or they're just, just ghosting you? Um, some aren't available directly because of other obligations that they have. Um, I've just uh, gotten a hold of some Facebook posts that were sent to me during the commercial break. Uh, some are convinced that uh, this show is biased against them. Uh, that I don't, I don't know if I don't know if that means me or the, the, the general <laughs> feel, the vibe. I don't know. I've never uh, I, what I, it is, but some some feel that either I am biased against them or the show is biased against them. Uh, some who have run in the past feel that the show is biased against them or I am biased against them. And I, I want to address that in this sense. And, and, and Matt, you know from calling games, and I called <laughs> games, people think you're rooting against their team or whatever, and mm -hmm. Dylan and the boys go through it today. And it was true 30 years ago when I started doing games <laughs> around here. It'll be true 30 years from now. In fact, I, I found, well, I told you I was cleaning a bunch of stuff out from i can't promise you this won't count against your time Aubrey. <laughs> but, but we're getting flooring put in i was moving some boxes i hadn't opened in years i opened up one there was an article from brent schnoff remember brent Schnoff? schnoff yes a writer for the journal in the 90s yes we were having a rain delay and i and i i went off on people thinking i was rooting against their team or for their team and and just explaining the fact that that's just not true mm -hmm. <laughs> i don't, I don't yeah. care if your team wins or loses i'm there to report the game and it's the same with elections. Mm -hmm. um, I don't have any vested interest in who wins the race. People ask me, oh, do you always root for Republicans because you're Republican? And I say, I, I root for the candidate who will appear on this show. <laughs> <laughs> That's who I root for. I, I root for the candidate who will appear on this show because this yeah. is what the show is about. Right. The show isn't about me. It's about the guests. If it was about me, I wouldn't have any guests on the program. It would just be me talking for two hours. The show's about the guests. So yeah. if, if, if you're running for office, I've got no vested interest in rooting against you or being difficult to you when you're on the show because if you win, you're not going to give me an interview. You're going to go, he's against me. Why would I go on his show? But, I, uh, but this, this is what is circulating during the city election. And I, I just saw four Facebook posts and it's from some people who I think should know better too involved in these posts as well. But if that's the way you feel, I can't change that. All I can tell you is... This show would end in about one election cycle. <laughs> if I rooted for people to win who who lost, and then the person I rooted against won, you're not going to give me an interview. I got no show. Let me just say, I, I've been a listener for a long time. I've been a co-host for a few years now. I have never, ever seen any bias for or against either side of any issue with you, Rob. I mean, we've had people as far to the left as you can go, as far to the right as you can go, and you've treated everyone with respect. You've treated everyone equally. You've asked for their opinions. You've asked pointed questions, as have Matt and other myself and other co-hosts. And, I mean, we're, we're happy to have anybody on here because the purpose of democracy is to listen to all sides. And, and our job in the media is to make sure that all opinions and all, all sides are put out there equally so that people can make the informed decisions when they enter the when they enter the voting booth and they can vote for the candidate that is best for them but our job is not to to bash it's not to push it's not to cajole our job is to bring all the information out and if candidates don't come on their information doesn't get out to as many people and i can tell you just from what i know about am radio our demographic votes our demographic votes more than any other demographic so if you're a candidate and you're listening, I, I mean, I'd, I'll come on with you. I would love to be on and talk to you. And I'm as, I mean, I'm as pro Martinsburg. All I want to see is the city be the best city it can be. I've been here 28 years. This is my home now and forever. And to our guest now, Aubrey and Malia Irvin from the By George Children Museum. She recently took on that task. I'll bend, bend that mic down towards you a little bit just so we get you straight on there. 
Use the black framers in there, oh. right on top there. There you go. There you go. Excellent. <laughs> Good morning to you. Hi, how are you? I am well. Good to have you back. We talked to you, I guess, about a month ago or so when you were having plans on getting this thing reopened. Yep. Where are you now? Uh, we will be officially open on Saturday for the first time in, I think, over four years. Congratulations. Thank this, this you. Was a pre, this was a COVID shutdown, I guess. Yeah, right? they, they shut during COVID, and it was just hard to stay open. So Sure. What made you move on to take on this task from the Apollo? Um, I had left the Apollo not sure whatever I was going, actually, and I just got lucky with um, doing this because I feel like it's a great opportunity to bring more things to kids in Martinsburg and kind of have, you know, as the Apollo's on East Martin and now the George is down the road, it's kind of like an artistic street. You know, maybe it'll be more of an artistic district. Yeah, and tell everyone exactly where you are. Um, we're inside the Capperton tra train station, mm -hmm. so it's kind of cool. We're like a hidden museum. And, and what is the mission of the museum and the, and the goal that you're hoping to accomplish? Um, originally, they opened it because of the George Washington Trail, and it was focused on George Washington you know, because he was around the area as a surveyor, as a teenager. But uh, now it's more just like inspiring learning for kids and doing all kinds of different things, not just history, but art and theater and, you know, music, pretty much anything that anyone's interested in. We're actually really interested in hearing what people want to see there and uh, would really love a lot of community involvement. I was going through my Today in History that I do each morning right before 6.30, and 1754, big day for George Washington. He was Lieutenant Colonel George Washington at this time. He led a, led a battle in the French and Indian Wars on this day. That's awesome. Yeah. He was probably walking right through your backyard. Probably, yeah. <laughs> at some point along the way. What's the demographic? Who, who are you hoping to attract? Everybody. Um, we want to do stuff for everybody. Right now, um, the way it is as before we closed during COVID, it was more towards littler kids, you know, like elementary school kids. Um, we're doing a bunch of summer camps that start next week. Um, and those go all the way up to age 14. But the cool thing that we're doing with the summer camps and stuff is we're bringing kids from like Martinsburg High School that are in like National Science Honor Society or in the art clubs and they're leading the camps. So they're, you know, empowered to plan the whole thing. And then I think it, really makes it more fun for the younger kids to get inspired from the kids that are a little bit older than them and they can relate better to them. And so I think it actually is better learning that way. Mm -hmm. So um, it'll be really fun. And, and how will the museum in this incarnation be different, if at all, from the previous incarnation of the By George Children Museum? Um, I think we just plan to bring in a lot more um, workshops and camps and classes. But then in addition to that, um, I started a group of volunteers um actually it's parents from the apollo that have come and helped me and um we're doing different exhibits every month to hope to bring people in more um and i hope to collaborate with um different businesses that might want to do that i've spoke to shepherd university so we might have some college kids come over and help with that um i'm really excited it's going to be there's it's kind of like the sky's the limit whatever we want to do you know with this support of the people in the community that have helped it it's pretty good that we'll be able to do it many when i hear the word museum i think of walking in and seeing exhibits and working my way around this doesn't sound like that type of museum it is like that but it's also a little more fun um, okay. because it's in the train station so we have a lot of space but it's split up in a lot of different spots in the train station so um there's colors that you can follow to help you go to the different spots. Um, so we have like the cool bridge that you can overlook and the trains go underneath and there's mm -hmm. stuff for kids to do there with like a manifest of what you could put in trains and stuff like that. But that's another spot we're gonna put change in exhibits. Um, I have a group of homeschool kids right now. They're actually coming today again um, mm -hmm. to make oversized giant flowers. And so that whole bridge will be covered in flowers when we reopen um, and we'll just keep adding to it. Um, and then downstairs there's like time travel rooms, which I think that's the, I can't remember the colors, yellow, I think. Okay. Um, and then down there we'll have the different exhibits too. Our first exhibit is gonna be about bees and why they're important and um, that's just like past that. Um, but then when you go back upstairs, there's a whole other place um, and that's where the trains are. There's originally the ticket counter from the trains um, and then there's a bunch of Legos. I think we have like a thousand Legos and a bunch of wooden trains for the kids to play with. And so there's lots to do just in the exhibits, but then we'll have different things that we'll bring in for learning and workshops. When are you, when is it open? 
Um, we were we will be open all summer because our camps are nine to four every day. Um, the because we're kind of going with reopening and doing the camps at the same time. I still need to fill up a bunch of the camps, but the one that starts next week is for bugs. It's a STEM camp, um, and we have enough kids to do next week. I'm hoping this will spread the word and people will check out the website and join the other camps because not only would their kids have fun, but the kids that are leading the camps have worked hard to create some pretty cool camps for their kids. If you're inviting bugs, I have a few at my house I could bring. <laughs> yeah. nice. You haven't spent any of the budget on yeah. buying bugs. Anyway. No, but they are bringing live animals um, oh, to nice. the camp next week. I think there's a lizard, a hermit crab. I think those are the only two live okay. animals coming, but they are going to create like art you know, projects mm -hmm. about bugs. And, you know, the girls in it, they are from national one actually one definitely just graduated i think the other one might be a senior next year but um they're from the national science honor society and so that teacher miss haynes and mr aren't go around and they do traveling science with the kids and so they're experienced with doing that and so i think it's really cool that they're going to do it next week and you know get the kids excited about stem and mm -hmm. you know doing fun things with it i think that's a great model um, they use a model similar to that with uh, the Yankower Nature Preserve, yeah. where they have older kids coming in as junior counselors who are running everything and teaching. And I think it, it not only helps it not only helps the little kids connect with with the older kids and stuff, but it helps the older kids as far as empowerment and learning and stuff. Where what do you envision? What what sort of stuff do you have like like during the school year? You've talked about the summer. Are you guys going to have programs like during the school year. Yeah, we, um, we're we going to do an after-school program. She's so in the she, National so, Science Honor so Society, So technically, you, you have a girl. I do have a girl. Yes, yes. <laughs> um, but she came up with the idea to do, like, an after-school with, and, like, the kids from the science um, club will come in and do different things every week. Um, but then we also, we're actually doing something super exciting this summer that kind of came up unexpectedly. Um, because I worked at the Apollo, I had a friend that I worked with, Anthony Brooks, and we noticed that Hades Town Live was available for the rights uh, for teens. And so we just were like, let's see if we can get the rights. And we got the rights. And so we're doing a collaboration with the George, as, and then the rehearsals will be at the Apollo. And then the show is going to be at the Roundhouse. And it's going to be amazing. That will be July 19th. And um, I think we'll grow from that, too, and try to do different things with all three of us when school starts too what a great triumvirate of uh of excellence you know putting all these different it's so many times community organizations don't want to work with other community groups having all three of these things collaborating is is really i mean that that's that's it impressive. makes sense it's yeah. common sense it does do it, it is it's common sense <laughs> unfortunately too many places don't follow that common sense that's great yeah how does someone find out more about the summer camps and what maybe the topics or subjects will be during those camps and then be able to sign their children up to be a part of it? Um, the quickest way to find it is on Facebook, the For the Kids by George. Um, but then you can also go to our website, which is ForTheKidsByGeorge.org. Um, we're kind of rebranding a little bit and nicknaming it the George because it's kind of a mouthful. Um, <laughs> I agree. Technically, it's still the name, but I've you know we have all our new stuffs kind of we're calling everything the george now more right. um so that's where but we're i'm posting every day as much as i can on facebook and instagram and then we have a great new website that just launched that has all the information so is facebook and the website more under the george or or if i type in the the by george you Children's can find Museum us either way either i've tried it either okay. way um just to see if it would be fine to switch to the nickname the george and okay. you can still find us that way so right. it's fine do you have in parentheses after that, it's Washington, not Costanza? <laughs> George is getting angry. No, that would be an amazing museum, though, to have <laughs> a George Costanza museum. It would be. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Feats of strength. Are there any other <laughs> festivals for the rest of us? Are there any other types of museums like this around the country? Are you aware? I don't really think so. I mean, there's all kinds of quirky little museums everywhere. I'm right. learning. I, you know, I didn't work at a museum ever before in my life. Um, so I'm learning a lot about museums. But I think we're pretty unique in that we're in a working train station so kids can come and they can actually see people commute to D.C. or, you know, they go on all over the place. Um, so there's that. And then there's also just the history from, you know, because Martinsburg has the roundhouse and all the amazing things that happened with the battle back then and how, you know, you can see the burnt down roundhouse and um, it's pretty unique just because it's so where there was so much history. 
Mm -hmm. How much money do you need to stay in business each year doing this? What's what's your budget going to be? Um, I mean, it would be great if we brought in at least, you know, 20000 a year, but it'd be better if we did more than that, of course. So we've gotten a lot of support um, from the city of Martinsburg to help, you know, hire me and get mm -hmm. me in there. Um, and so I just think even just volunteering, if you can't come and see it, that way, you know, just come and help would be good for Martinsburg, too. Are you getting grants from the United Way or the foundation or anything yet? Yeah, we have. Um, I worked with the foundation um, with the Apollo, and then so th th their grant cycle hasn't opened up yet since I've started. But, yeah, um, they've helped the George in the past, too. So Yeah, and in regards to using the facilities, uh, there's is there a, a user charge as you do all the programs that go along with everything, too? The train station? No, and if you're holding camps and whatever, does each child pay a fee to yeah, do what to, you're doing? Yeah, to join the camp, there's a fee. Um, we offer uh, scholarships, though, and we just became part of the West Virginia Hope Scholarship, which is like for kids that are growing into school. They get. Uh, I just learned about it. Um, so we can offer it that way, too. Um, we're willing to, you know, we want all the kids to be able to participate. So whatever it takes to get them in there, we could do that. Um, but just to visit the museum, it's only $6 a person. So it's not too bad. What's your long range plans? Um, it would be awesome to be open full time and to have um, never ending exhibits and, you know, support for that. Um, it would be great to be able to um, do any kind of learning for kids and have it grow with like the the mentorships and the you know just have it be like a big group effort where even the little kids now are growing up to become the people that are teaching in the camps later on that'd be awesome what year did this place first open do you know i think it opened in 2013 um and it's been quiet i think for a while and so i'm excited to have it be a little more loud and have people's attention to come down and see us and loud literally because you know hopefully there'll be a lot of kids in there how many can you accommodate in the building um, I think that we can accommodate, usually for like the field trips, we do two classes. So it's like 60 kids because um, each exhibit probably could accommodate maybe 20 kids at mm -hmm. a time um, right now. So, Are you as tied in with the schools at this point to, as you need to be? I haven't been tied in yet because we, the, the city has been working on the building. And right now, actually, there's no public restroom. So I'm really crossing my fingers to get it done this week. Um, but when we open the fall, I'll definitely be getting schools in there. You can use our women's room on the way out, by the way, <laughs> if you need to. No. I if just you am have scared a, I'm going to have all those kids there, no bathroom. But. If, you have a, if you have a quarter management around here, they're <laughs> a little tight. They're a little tight. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and, and actually, we'll, we'll take dollar bills, too. And yeah. just <laughs> tipping is appreciated. Tipping. I'm good. I'm good. Thank Where you. you go, you see that sign. I, mean, I, I think one of the one of the most important things that you're going to need to do now that you're with this is everybody knows what the Apollo is. Mm -hmm. Everybody knows what the Roundhouse is. Mm -hmm. Quite frankly, I've been in Martinsburg 28 years. I'm a, a business owner in town. I live in town. I've never heard of it until today. I had never heard of the museum, and I actually I took the train last month down to DC. I had never heard of it. So I think getting the word out is going to be paramount. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, I think that we have so many awesome camps that are coming this summer and it's been a battle to just get the word out because like you said, a lot of people I've said, yeah, I'm at the museum and they don't know where we are. So hopefully that'll change soon. Um, just from word of mouth, I've had so much support from the people and the families that I worked with at the Apollo. I'll say like, I need your help share this. And they share like, I don't like a hundred shares, you know, so the community sport has been amazing. What is what is the best way to find you on Facebook? Which what should people type in to get right to you so so our listeners can like this on Facebook, hopefully share some of your posts because I think this is a great opportunity for kids to learn. Mm -hmm. It's for the kids by George all together, not spread out, but all the words spelled out. For the kids by George. Okay. Yeah. Well, I'll like it when we get off the air. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Yeah. You mentioned earlier hours, especially with the camps coming up about 9 to 4 each day. Uh, does that include weekends? And as schools come back in, would you then look to do more evening-type hours? Um, when we reopened for, like, in the once school start, I did mm -hmm. get a grant to pay help some pay someone. We hired a great mm -hmm. guy who's 
has like 30 years of museum experience so i'm mm-hmm. pretty lucky to have him there um so we'll have regular hours of tuesdays from 10 to 2 thursdays from 10 to 2 fridays from 3 to 6 and saturdays from 10 to 4. we want to do like a homeschool thing every tuesday morning mm-hmm. and then maybe give an opportunity to moms to get out of the house with their kids on thursday mornings and then we'll try to do special events on Saturdays. Um, and then we'll just play it by ear. If mm-hmm. there's more need and we can stay open and do more in the evenings, we'll definitely do that. Um, in the fall, I think it'd be really fun to do like a haunted museum and do some things for adults too. So, Spooky. Yeah. Could you use more volunteers? Yes. I mean, we can always use volunteers. I did put on the website, there's um, down at the bottom, it's about the exhibits. Because even if you know you want to just come and haunt glue for a little bit, that would help but there's all kinds of things that could be done and mm-hmm. the other thing is i'm new there so it's really great to get new ideas too like everyone has different thoughts and so that's exciting too cool Bob, good to see you again nice mm-hmm. to see you congratulations on your new venture thank you and uh, saturday's the big opening yep we're we're part of the art walk so um we'll people are i don't know if you've heard of the art walk but they walk around downtown and there's a card they do and so mm-hmm. hopefully people will stop by for that what time will you open 10. 10 o'clock. What time will you close Saturday? Uh, we will close at 4 on Saturday. So you're there for the long haul. Yeah. All right. Very good. But no restrooms. Don't go in there asking if you can Maybe use the restroom. Maybe they'll get it done this week. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to put out good energy. Is there a porta pot nearby or something? I mean, no. So you just go in there for six hours and don't drink anything? Uh, no, I mean, it's public restrooms, so there's some over oh, on the okay. sweet side. Right, yeah. <laughs> I was going to worry there for you because yeah. I can tell you, as a 61-year-old male, I couldn't do six no. hours. I'm always no surprised chance. when I find out you're only 61. <laughs> <laughs> this city elections made me feel 70. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Rob, thanks so much. So appreciate you coming in. Thank you.